This is gonna be one of the biggest setups I have ever built. Not only do I have a new microphone from Elgato that released today, I also have an awesome Kickstarter keyboard that has a built-in stream deck on the side. It's specifically for streamers. I have the coolest Bluetooth speaker you have ever seen. But most importantly, I bought three amazing gaming monitors because this is a triple monitor gaming and streaming setup. All three of these are 27 inch, 144 hertz, IPS. And since I was spending so much money already i decided that i also needed 1440p apparently i don't really care about making a profit with these videos because i literally spent all my money which is why i'm extremely happy that i can announce the sponsor of today's video owned owned.tv offers beautiful animated overlays that will make your stream look better in no time whether you want a Christmas theme for the coming holidays, an officially licensed Call of Duty Warzone theme, or any other style from their huge library of completely animated overlay packs, they have it all and they are optimized for Twitch and YouTube streaming. Besides overlays, their best-selling services are the two emote makers which will let you create static or animated emotes for your stream. If you want to get your own graphics, go to owned.gg tvn or click the link on top of my description and use my code TVN at checkout for 50% of the price. So this is what came in the box besides the screen. To be clear, there's definitely a reason why I chose these screens, why the screens are 1440p, not only because it's awesome for gaming, I will go over all that stuff later. And I just wanna show you what this would look like if you would use the stand, because I'm gonna use a monitor arm. Now, this is one of the most beautiful stands I've ever seen with a monitor. It's extremely clean. The back of the monitor also looks amazing. And this is what the screen would look like if you would assemble it. This is from the back. Now, before I put the monitors on this desk, I want to place the PC here because I want to see how much space I have left, which <laughs> looking at this is a lot. By the way, the price of this PC is $1,000. I built it myself in one of my previous videos, so you can check it out. I will link it in the cards and in the description. And you can find all the parts in the video as well as some information on cheaper and more expensive parts in case your budget is lower or higher than one grand. You can see that this is a very big desk and I want to show it to you because basically I made two versions of it. We are definitely gonna get rid of the mess in the corner. I bought double-sided tape that's completely transparent. I'm gonna try to stick the router to the bottom of the desk. And I also bought three cable trays that are pretty big and they're gonna span from the left to the right all the way across to hide the power supply and all cables from all this stuff. Now to come back to the two different versions, on the left I have a drawer and then on the right I have two legs. This desk used to go from here to there and then completely to the right and I tried to make it as beautiful as possible so on the left here you will see that I completely finished it with the same material as the top of the desk. This is not an Alex drawer, the name is Ikea Mike or Mick and what I would do is do the exact same thing on the right there. You can do it without the tabletop on the left because you will need to buy an extra one to be able to cut it down and then put it on the left and then on the right of the other Mickey drawer. However, it does look pretty beautiful like this. The table top you see here is an Ikea Coral B. It's pretty sturdy. Now it does bend a tiny bit, but that's because it's two meters and 50 centimeters wide. I don't know what that is in freedom units, but I will add Ikea links to all these materials in the description as well as the legs there. Now I have no idea if all these screens are gonna be able to fit on the desk and if I'm gonna have room to put other stuff on the desk like the Bluetooth speaker on the left there or maybe a headphone stand. So let's try try to see what we're working with. Now it looks like I'm gonna have kind of a problem because there is not much space left. Let's hope that when I install this monitor arm and I put the monitors kind of skewed, I hope that I'm gonna end up with a bit more room than expected. Unboxing this is kind of dangerous because they are all spring loaded. So if I'm not careful, I'm gonna get one of the arms in my face. This was a very beefy monitor arm that I found. It's a triple monitor arm, of course. It's gonna have one point of contact on the desk and then there's gonna be three monitors floating. I've never installed something like this, but I did install a very beefy monitor arm for my ultra wide. I'm looking up the price I paid for this monitor arm because it looks very premium and it was $105. Now, that's absolutely not cheap. However, usually a very beefy monitor arm will cost you about $200, $250. So if this arm can hold all monitors completely steady and completely aligned, then this monitor arm is absolutely worth the price. Now I can definitely say it feels very beefy. Let's try not to drop it on these screens. I'm gonna shove it 
over the end here then tighten it on the bottom and <laughs> look at this i am so looking forward to the end result of the setup so what needs to happen now is connecting all these plates to the backs of the monitors because then we can use that to connect the monitors to these mounts they give you very easy screws you don't even need a screwdriver however you can use an electric one if you want to make it go faster let's connect the first one i'm gonna try to show you so you just slide it on it like this and then you have these other thumb screws and then you can secure it like this we need to adjust the strength but i'm gonna do the other ones first now all three of these monitors are LG 27 GN800 B ones. There is an extremely similar monitor from LG the 27 GL 83 AB and this one has a slightly worse response time however it is adjustable in height so if you want to use the stand go with that one otherwise the ones I'm using right now are better for gaming. Now the reason I chose 1440p monitors is that first of all it looks amazing for gaming but second of all it gives you a lot of pixels to put programs on while streaming you will have two monitors on the sides to manage your stream and that's gonna be amazingly convenient before we install all the cables i want to check out these cable trays the box itself is surprisingly heavy so i assume they are gonna be very decent oh wow these are complete steel and look at that you're not gonna see anything there's a lot of stuff that fits in between i think we're gonna be able to pretty much cover the whole width i guess something like this will look pretty good and as you can see they also have room for a power strip so if it's perfectly in between this is obviously extremely useful oh. <laughs> Okay, now to say connecting these was kind of a hassle would be the understatement of the year. However, look at this. That's gonna be absolutely perfect. It's gonna be like that all the way to the right. Okay, it is finally completed. Now this took me 44 minutes, which is, well, <laughs> kind of embarrassing. But let's be honest here, it looks amazing and it's gonna hide all cables. So let's put this power strip inside the cable tray. This fits absolutely perfectly. Look at this, I already did the cable management for this monitor and it's absolutely amazing. This monitor arm comes with these caps and you route the cables through the bottom of the arm and then put the cap on it. And as you can see, it looks really, really clean. Now, as my mouse pad, I'm gonna use a TVN desk mat. Now, it is not for sale yet. However, that is absolutely my goal. Now, as you can see, my logo is here on the bottom left. And I've been looking for a manufacturer for quite some time. I am still figuring out the shipping part. If you wanna get notified when I eventually launch them, the best way is probably joining my Discord or following me on Instagram. I am posting stories about designing this stuff, finding a manufacturer, figuring out the shipping. I will probably post about making the store too so that might be interesting for some people it will be on the screen here now the keyboard and the mouse i've been excited about this for a while however before we check all that out i cannot wait to compare this mouse which is a razer viper ultimate to this glorious modelo wireless both of these mice are extremely light and i'm not sure what happened here like is this the real packaging i think i must have bought some deal on amazon oh renewed oh this is refurbished <laughs> How did I not know this? Anyway, so this is probably not the premium Razer packaging, but we got a pretty new mouse. Now, this definitely explains why the price was lower than expected. I thought I caught some amazing deal. To be honest, I kind of did because this is a completely new mouse. If you look at it, I don't see any marks here. This mouse looks completely new and the weight is extremely similar to this glorious Model O. I feel like it's a tiny bit heavier. And one of the main reasons I wanted to switch to this mouse is that it comes with a charger. So I think you can just slide it on there. Oh, there we go. It's magnetic. And this is obviously going to be extremely useful. And that is a big workflow upgrade in my book. By the way, looking at this, I feel like the bottom part is going to be RGB. And you can also peel this off on the bottom and then tape it to the desk. So let's do it as close to the position where I'm sitting as possible. Because if it's over there, I'm probably going to be too lazy to put it over here every night. The goal is that when I'm finished at my desk, I just put it over here and I forget about it. Now, the keyboard, this is a whole other thing. I should have shown this on the channel a while back. It got sent to me. It was a Kickstarter. And this keyboard, if we take off this peel, take a look at this. This is a complete stream deck. Well, not exactly a stream deck, but it's a touchscreen macro pad. This is a speaker. This is audio control. And then on the side of it, you can also see a few ports because this keyboard has an audio mixer. Now, in the box, they give you a few cables. I'm going to figure figure out what they're for and besides that you also get a bunch of colored keycaps so that's definitely pretty cool take a look at this and I also think they did amazing work on the packaging and the branding because look at this I'm not sure if you can see the whole texture on the camera but it looks amazing I'm quickly gonna take my really crappy wish.com chair and this is the worst chair I have 
ever used. Now I am going to use a USB hub. This is one from the brand Icybox. I've used it in my previous setup too. And I'm just going to be installing this on the back here. Now at first I was going to use this mic arm here as my, well, microphone arm. However, since I'm going to be using this professional camera here as my webcam, I'm going to need a very beefy arm. And I feel like this one here would be strong enough. So I'm going to be installing this as a webcam arm. Oh, that's definitely pretty heavy and feels very sturdy. It does have a loaded spring. Let's make sure I don't hit the screens with it. I definitely feel like this is gonna be very strong. Let's install it. Now with this setup, I feel like the camera should come here. Another option would be if this screen goes to the right, that the camera would be in the middle, since then I will not be filmed from above me, which kind of looks weird sometimes, especially if I also use it for YouTube videos instead of only for streaming. Getting filmed from there while reacting to people's setups, etc., will look better. However, I wanna try putting it in a streamer setup and then see how it looks. Now, if my editor can zoom in on this, this looks very clean. Let's connect it. Now, I just found out that the camera actually doesn't really fit on here. So I looked through some stuff and luckily I found this converter from Elgato. And I think I'm gonna be able to use this to connect my camera to this arm. Luckily, it did fit. And I think this is gonna be a perfect setup. You can tighten every turning point of this arm so that it doesn't move again. Now, this setup works amazing. However, there is one flaw since this arm isn't meant for cameras. I cannot aim the webcam up or down. So I am going to use something called a ball head and this way I'm gonna be able to loosen this then point the camera and just tighten it so now I can perfectly aim the camera then just tighten the ball head and then the camera is just gonna stay in place it's perfect this is great and I could also just lower all of the screens and then the webcam would also come down a bit and be more on my eye level now one thing I was really looking forward to and I unboxed it yesterday and it's three of the exact same as D card readers all connected to the same USB hub and I also bought a really long USB extension cable however maybe we're not gonna need it because I want to tape all three of them here on the bottom and they're probably gonna be long enough now before we attach them to the desk I want to check this out because this look really interesting it's basically double-sided tape but it's a special kind because according to the reviews it's reusable and it's the kind of tape you put on your wall and then you can just stick your phone to it take it off put it on again, take it off, and it keeps working. By the way, the reason I do need three SD card readers is that I'm filming with three cameras all the time. One there, one here, and then that's the third. And yesterday after filming, I wanted to put all my footage on my laptop as fast as possible. And with one SD card reader, that takes a while. Now, this strip here, I guess I'm just gonna test it on this wall, and I'm just gonna tape it on, cut it off, and then now I should be able to take off the protective feel here let's see now it's definitely very sticky i'm gonna put my phone on it <laughs> make sure it doesn't fall that's very sturdy i'm gonna take it off oh that's not easy to cut off okay i got it off and i also got pretty much the whole wall with it oh no now the wall is destroyed <laughs> oh no look at that now, I have to test it again to see if it's reusable because I think that this stuff actually works. I just shouldn't have put it on a painted wall. Yep, indeed, this is probably very reusable, but do not put it on a wall. Luckily, I bought backup strips because I'm not going to use this tape to stick all these SD card readers to my desk. These are command strips. Command is a brand and they are always amazing. Now, I decided to use this tape anyway because, well, it's very strong and as you can see it's also the perfect width so i'm gonna connect them all three on the right that's the third one looks extremely clean and i'm gonna tape the usb hub on the bottom as well now this is absolutely one of the cleanest setups i've ever built this time i wanted everything to fit perfectly everything to be managed well and i feel like this is coming together very well now a part i've been extremely looking forward to this awesome bluetooth speaker by the way i want to mention it already elgato helped Built this video they helped sponsor me a bit to buy all the gear etc because i'm going over their new microphone now it literally launched today but i just want to mention it already since i'm really thankful for it because look at that this setup cost me a lot now i'm unboxing the wrong thing this is for later so i have two of these bluetooth speakers and i'm gonna take one out of the package because you will immediately know why i'm so hyped about this look at this look at how awesome this thing looks now this is a more basic version than this one here but i want to test the speaker first while well, i want to show you 
ready to pair. As you heard, it makes an awesome sound when you turn it on. I'm gonna put on some stream beats. So I just turned on Bluetooth. I'm gonna click on Grava Star Mars Pro. Bluetooth connected. Uh, there we go. And let's put on a song. So this here is a touchscreen slider. And I gotta say, let's listen to it for a second. The bass is amazing. There is definitely a lot of bass with this speaker. I recognize something in this song. It's from Stream Beats, by the way, from Harris Heller. From which song is this? Oh, it's from Build a Bitch. <laughs> now, I would like to compare them in this video, but I'm gonna get copyright striked. Oh, by the way, I didn't see it from the back, but there is RGB on the speaker. You can change the color. And I'm gonna put it over here while we check out the second one. Now, this must be one of the coolest and the most original speaker I have ever seen. Now, I will add a link to this in the description. I'm gonna warn you, it's not cheap. I think it's $250. I think this one is even $350. But this is pure art. Like, it's really detailed. It's very heavy. It feels like steel. This is a complete statement piece in any room. Now, I had to build this myself. The shield and then its gun and then this on the back. It all came separately in the box i had to screw it on myself and then they give you some plates like this one here that fit perfectly in the design they put a lot of work in this these things just completely blow my mind oh right i had this box this is a charging base and again very pretty there is a magnetic piece that comes in the box you can plug it in the charging port on the bottom you can just align the legs here and then boom it clicks on it and if you plug the charger base with this cable then the speaker will always be charging and then now it is fun Finally time to check out the Elgato microphone. As I said multiple times throughout this video, from the moment that this video launches, you will be able to buy this mic. And to be fair, I have no idea what the price is gonna be. Let's see if I got that information. Now, unless I missed something, I did not receive any info about the price. Now, it's gonna be really hard to review this without knowing what price point they are aiming at. This is gonna be hard to compare it to other mics. Now, they did tell me that when this microphone launches, it's gonna be as a bundle with the Wave XLR, which is their audio interface, then the Wave DX, then an Elgato XLR cable, which I think is also new, and then this, which is the Elgato Low Profile Mic Art. So since this is gonna be a whole combo and they're gonna be selling it as a combo, I assume the mic is gonna be 99 at the highest 199, because otherwise this combo would be too expensive. And this makes me think of another combo. And in that case, the mic is 99, so I assume that's what it's gonna be. Before you install a new mic arm, it's always good to check out every possible position. This one would kind of interfere with the keyboard. Now I had planned it like this, but apparently you need to speak into it from the the top like this and on the promo images they connect the microphone from behind the screens and since this version of the arm is a low profile one they also have a high one that comes from here behind the monitors on the top now this would actually work i could also connect it the other side but i have plenty of room for the mouse here and it isn't in front of the screens that's the big upside of using the low profile arm it just doesn't bother you at all let's connect the elgato xlr cable you can route the cable through the arm by the way these are magnetic and on the other side of the xlr cable goes into the Wave XLR, which is an audio interface that gives you access to Wave Link, which is the big, big upside of using this for streaming. So far, no other software compares. I've talked about that a lot on this channel. In the other side of the Wave XLR, you plug a USB cable and that one goes in the USB hub. Now, it's also time to turn on this PC and let's hope nothing explodes. We have a big problem because this mouse isn't working because the USB receiver apparently didn't come with it. I read online that it should be in the dock there. The USB slot in the dock is empty. So this sticker here, quality control pass. Well, the mouse Mouse might have passed quality control in terms of scratches, but someone stole the USB. So I'm gonna use the white glorious model O. This one is wired, and to be fair, it looks better in the setup with the white from the PC and then the keyboard and the mouse. Let me move this camera a bit because look at the PC setup. This looks so amazing. Now, I really want to hear what this sounds like. If you want to use this Elgato Wave XLR, you need to go to their website to downloads. And then there you need to download Wave Link. Now, these are some other products we can check out, but I need to install this headset first because otherwise I can't listen to how the microphone sounds. This here is something really interesting. It is one of the cheapest wireless headsets that I found. And look at this. On the box, it says in big blue letters, number one best selling. I was about to say, apparently it's a best selling headset because I mean, it was very popular 
store on Amazon. But then in really small letters, it says PC gaming headset brand in America. <laughs> so they just mean that HyperX is the best selling brand. However, it looks like this headset is the best selling one. It was about $60 and that's definitely not that expensive for a wireless headset. So let's hope it's big enough for my giant head. Ooh, too big. Imagine having a bigger head than me. This is something I like. The microphone absolutely stays in place no matter how you position it. It doesn't automatically move anywhere. It just stays in place. So that's a big plus. Now the wireless receiver is huge. However, I don't really mind. And in the software, as my monitor mix, I'm now gonna be able to choose HyperX Cloud Stinger. And we can turn on the headset on the side. Let's hope it turns on. Maybe it needs batteries. It comes with a USB-C cable. I will probably need to charge it. I'm gonna take one of these crazy long cables cables for a second because the one that it comes with is embarrassingly short so let's turn it on now ah there we go okay so i turned on the camera that i'm gonna be using as my webcam and i also got a new elgato microphone to work and the headset also works it is very lightweight it also seals everything around you pretty well like i hear myself differently now compared to when i take it off and for now i will keep using the new microphone but this camera that's gonna be the webcam won't look that good because i still need to install this led panel right there or right there not sure yet however we're gonna do it later because i quickly want to dive into this new microphone so elgato sent me a cheat sheet all right it's not that much information they want to sell the audio interface with the microphone with the xlr cable and then the xlr mic now i quickly did some testing with this microphone here and i really have to say that like most elgato products they just were great without changing too much and same counts for this microphone the pop filter that's inside and i think it's a double one they say in the documentation do a layer acoustic foam with them embedded nylon membrane now what this does is eliminating the p sounds the t sounds some of the s's that sound too harsh so if i say like plosive plosive now i'm really overdoing it but i think even in this scenario you will barely hear it and the plosive thing is only one of them by the way part of it is controlled by the wavelength program here you can control the input gain you have audio enhancements here you can add a low cut filter one is enabled here you have a clip guard here which will protect you from shouting so if i disable the clip guard and then i shout like hey no that was really loud. Now my editor will probably make it a bit more quiet for you, but you will hear that the audio is gonna distort. However, if I enable the clip guard here and then I do the same thing, hey, now that was really loud and I think the clip guard will have caught it. And just overall, the sound of this microphone sounds really produced, really processed, really professional, like a studio microphone. And I've always been extremely positive about this Wavelink program here from Elgato and I still am. And now, especially since they have an XLR micro phone that does sound good that does look good and that goes together with their audio interface this is an amazing setup now i don't want to go extremely technical about this microphone that's not my style of content so what i want to tell you is that a lot of information on this cheat sheet is basically saying that it's enhancing your voice it's tailored to voice recording it's doing things to reduce the echo from your room that goes into the microphone it is also trying to eliminate things like your pc that's running on the background etc by really aiming at your voice pickup and focus focusing on that. Now what I am gonna say is that's a dynamic microphone. It has a cardioid pickup pattern. It is obviously an XLR microphone. It has a swivel here. You speak into it from the front, not like this, like a lot of microphones. And the most important thing to say about it is that it sounds really good. Now I was gonna go over the Elgato software now. However, my webcam just turned off because it's overheating apparently. Now this is an LED panel that recently came onto my radar. It's really big. It's also not very cheap. I think it was around 160 However, a lot of the popular and really good LED panels and other types of lights are around this price point. That's why I wanted to give this light a chance because when I started making videos, I always thought that Newer was like a crappy company, like one of these companies that you see on Amazon that you've never heard before. But the more I'm looking into Newer, they have a lot of really good products. They also have like big lights, like the light I'm filming myself with. The light definitely doesn't go as high as I would have expected. This is the highest it can go. It will barely come above my monitor. Let's add it to the top of the stand and looking at it now, especially with this ball head in between, I don't think you would need extra height so i'm going to aim it down a bit then i'm gonna lower it like this now i feel like this setup is looking awesome i'm seeing myself on the screen there and the monitors from the side like all three of them look extremely aesthetically pleasing now i just finished connecting everything and it's definitely kind of a mess down here because of all these stands i have the monitor stand over here and i had the webcam that's connected with this stand here that's also on the desk and now we have another stand that kind of goes in between it's pushed between everything 
and then that's the light that comes out on top. However, we are going to fix all the cable management. As you can see, it already looks pretty good. I am gonna fix everything in that corner so it looks like that. Now, you can control the light with a few buttons on top. Here, you can change the color temperature and then the brightness. However, apparently, the light also comes with an application. It's just an app called Newer, which is the brand of the light. So, I'm finding it right here, Newer GL1. So, I'm gonna click on Add Device, then choose Bluetooth, and here it is, Newer GL1 click on ok and there it is i can find the device let's try to turn it off it works very quickly so let's turn the brightness to the maximum to see oh that's very bright now this is a problem with some cheaper led panels this isn't the cheap one it's 170 dollars which is a lot and the cheaper ones usually don't really light your room or yourself enough however this one is absolutely going to light me enough i'm going to turn the brightness to the minimum so now it's completely off then this is about half brightness and then this is gonna be full brightness. Now the camera is going to adjust for the light. So as you will see now, I will be very bright and maybe it's gonna overexpose here a bit. But you should see what happens if I reduce the brightness gradually. You will see the background becoming lighter and lighter because the camera will be adding more and more extra fake light to keep my face the same level of brightness. However, what happens if I turn it up this much? My face is really, really bright. However, the background isn't getting lit that much by the LED panel. So the stronger this light is gonna be on my face and the closer it's gonna be to my face the darker the background is gonna be and the more i'm gonna stand out now besides changing the brightness you can also change the color temperature so now it's extremely orange if i move it completely to the right you will see it's completely white so what i quickly want to show you is why the wavelength program that you're getting with this audio interface why this program is so useful and it's pretty simple to explain so you're getting all these columns for your audio right this column here is your microphone this is called the music could be your music and so the way this works is that in your audio settings for example google chrome here you could send this to wavelink browser and so then in the wavelink program i can add another column and then i can add browser and then now as a result if i go to my browser here i press play you will see that the browser in wavelink starts moving and here's the exciting thing i have my headsets here and as you can see my monitor mix is hyperx cloud stinger which is this headset and then i have a separate stream mix which is going to the stream and so for the music that's playing in the browser here i can turn the music down in my headphones you can see the icon here and then i can make the music pretty loud for the stream so then while gaming i will barely hear my music or any sound that's playing in the browser however my stream will hear it very clearly and then the last thing i want to touch on is that on the bottom this is the last step that makes this awesome so you have the monitor mix which is for yourself and then the stream mix but you can see two ear icons here right you can select one of them and so if i click the ear icon from the stream mix then now in my headphones i will hear what the stream would be or is hearing so if i want to adjust the volume of my game here for the stream and then for my music for the stream or browser and then my voice chat i want to turn it down so i hear my voice chat loud but the stream doesn't then if this ear icon is selected i can hear if the stream mix is sounding good if i can confirm that it's enjoyable for the stream then i can go back to this ear icon here and then i hear my mix again this is completely overpowered for streaming once you have a program like this on a screen next to you you will never want to go back because you have complete control here you know exactly where all audio is going if the stream says hey man the music is really loud you can just be like boom turn it down and this is a complete game changer for streaming now this combo here isn't the only way to get access to that program you can also buy their usb microphone which is the elgato wave 1 or wave 3 and that's gonna give you the exact same control however i do have to be honest this combo here is amazing and i sound really good now another product i have is one that got sent to me and it's a smart headphone stand well it's not really a smart headphone stand you can just charge your phone here with a wireless charging pad you can see that i haven't really checked out the whole product now this looks pretty premium like i assume you have to push this in and i think we're gonna have to screw it in we can attach a screw from the back i'm gonna drop in the screw so we can immediately test if i can charge my phone using this here by the way this looks kind of awesome so i'm going to add it here for now plug it in the headphone stand and i'm gonna use the case because it should work with so let's hope my phone lights up when i put it on because i really like the stand so i'm gonna turn off my screen let's put it on 
it's working. Now, I think it's finally time to test out this keyboard and see what it does. Should have a QR code. I did see it before. Let's see what this link is. Now, it's doing some stuff. I do have to remind you that this was a Kickstarter product and I don't think this was the final version. Now, it does definitely work. As you can see, it just turned on. You can go to the calculator here. You can make a calculation. It works. If you go to the settings, they give you a QR code. So then this QR code goes to a Chinese login page which I can't read. This option here gives you a trackpad, which is extremely delayed. My editor will put my screen recording and then my hand here next to each other. And as you can see, so there is a big delay between me moving left and right and then the mouse moving left and right. <laughs> now I've been looking at some videos and apparently this button here is to change the RGB because this keyboard should have RGB. I'm gonna click on something else. I will turn off my lights for a second so you can see it. I'm gonna choose another style. That's white, blue, but not very visible. Now this is very visible. Now, very important, very important message. I've been looking at the Kickstarter page, the Indiegogo page. Kickstarter has a lot of negative comments about people saying that it doesn't arrive, that they don't answer. And then on Indiegogo, there are two comments, one of them saying, hey, don't buy this, it's a Kickstarter scam. Now, whether that's true or not, I can't find a lot of content about this keyboard. It does feel very gimmicky, like there's a lot of sound effects on them. And then in the text, they say, it provides more than 100 default sound effects, which are perfect for breaking the eye and creating an enjoyable atmosphere while you are live streaming. Maximize your creativity and enrich your content. Now, I'm not sure whether this product is legit, but there is no way in hell that I would spend my own money on this, so I don't want to recommend it to you. Buy another keyboard, get yourself a real stream deck, and you'll be much better off. Now, it won't come as a surprise to you that this setup was definitely pretty expensive to build. I want to thank Owned and Elgato <laughs> for sponsoring this video. By the way, I'm just fixing the cable management here. These cable trays are absolutely amazing. Now, I love the end result of this setup the three screens look amazing if you want to see my behind the scenes or you want to see other setups that i built you can check out my instagram at the video nerd i will put it on the screen if you want to stream yourself and you're not really sure how to set up obs i have a course on that you can watch it for free on skillshare you can sign up for one free month and then cancel afterwards i will link the skillshare course in the description thanks a lot for watching and i hope to see you in one of my next videos have a nice day